another iron carbon phase diagram question. Our old good old friend, the iron carbon phase diagram. The uh, first part of the question says label any unlabeled two phase fields. So that's a good way to start things off. Let's just go ahead and do that. We've got alpha on the left, ferrite. We've got cementite on the right. So this is the two phase alpha plus Fe3C. <coughs> We've got gamma on the left, Fe3C on the right. This is two phase gamma plus Fe3C. This here, little tie line would tell us alpha on the left, gamma on the right. So that region there is the two phase alpha plus gamma. And then we've got over here, we've got gamma plus liquid and liquid plus Fe3C. And I'm not going to bother with the delta phase up at the top. Then, okay, part B says identify and name any invariant reaction. So that's, that's good. We know we've got... right here, looks like a eutectic V on top of a horizontal line like that, except this is a solid phase going to two other solid phases. So right here, we have a paratectic. Whoa, eutectoid. I'm just fooling you. I described it myself and then I just, I don't know, I had a brain fart. So we've got solid going to two solids. It looks like a eutectic, but it's not. It's eutectoid. This is a eutectic liquid going to two solids. <coughs> um, we also have a paratectic up there, but I'm not going to write that one in. There's not very much space. And, um, all right, so then the question also tells us that the overall composition overall composition of the alloy we're, look, alloy we're looking at is 0.45 weight percent. So I've, I've labeled the composition of the eutectoid at 0.76. So if our overall composition is 0.45, it's to the left of the eutectoid. It's a hypo-eutectoid composition. And that means upon cooling, we're going to move down from single phase gamma, we're going to cross through the phase boundary there, and we're start start to form some alpha phase, some ferrite. So that means question C, the pro eutectoid. Phase for a 0.45 weight percent carbon steel is going to be the alpha phase or ferrite. Okay, then the uh, next part of the question asks us what's the mass the total mass of ferrite going to be for this alloy cooled to 725. So this is 727 degrees right there, the eutectoid isotherm. So we're now below that. We've transformed, we've formed some perlite, but we want to know total ferrite. So that's a straightforward question. That's saying we continue down at 0.45 weight percent until we're below the eutectoid isotherm, draw our tie line, we've got 0 0.0. 0.022 as one comp composition on the left, 6.7 as the composition on the right, and the center of our lever is at 0.45 weight percent. So I like to say the amount when we're dealing with the lever rule, so the amount of alpha total, not distinguishing between pro eutectoid and uh, ferrite in, in the perlite, this is the total, is going to be 6.7 minus 0 0.45, and it's the opposite side, we're, we're dealing with the phase on the left, so the opposite side of the lever is going to be from here to here, 
divided by the total side of the uh, length of that tie line, which is 6.7 minus 0 0.022. Turns out that's equal to, actually, sorry, the question asks us for the mass of ferrite. So, and it, it gives us in the question that it's 2 kilograms. So we're going to actually do one extra step here. We're going to multiply by 2 kilograms, and we're going to get our final answer, which is going to be 1.9 kilograms. Mostly ferrite. A little bit of cementite. And in fact, question E asks us for how much cementite there is. So two ways you could do that. One, you could say, well, there's only two phases, ferrite plus cementite. If we've just told, we've just determined that there's 1.9 kilos of ferrite, there has to be 0.1 of cementite. So you can go 2 minus 1.9 equals 0 0.1 kilograms of Fe3C. Just for the sake of being complete, you could also go like this, or and you could do the opposite side of the lever, which would be 0 0.45 minus 0 0.022 divided by 6.7. Again, the same length of the tie line as before. We've just got in the numerator the opposite side. We're calculating the cementite, so we're taking the other side, the small little side of the lever. And that's going to give us the same thing times 2 kilograms is going to be equal to 0 0.1 kilograms. Either one gives us the same, either approach gives us the same value. Okay. Question F. It says now, all right, we've told, we know how much ferret there is in total. How much of that is actually the primary phase or the pro-eutectoid phase? The phase that formed above the eutectoid isotherm. All right, so we have to, to answer that, we have to think back in, in, in temperature, or back in time, if we, cool, we were cooling this, we're going to think, well, what was the phase that formed above the eutectoid isotherm? And we say, well, there was some, sorry, what was the ferrite that formed there? There was a certain portion of ferrite. The rest was austenite, or gamma. The gamma com transforms completely to perlite. We're not concerned with that. All we're concerned about is the initial ferrite. So we go back up above the isotherm and draw our tie line right there. We're going to answer the question in this way. We're going to say, how much ferrite was there above the eutectoid isotherm, just above it? That's the same as, still in, as, as how much pro-eutectoid ferrite there was, or there is. OK, so opposite side again, we're going to take 0.76 minus 0 0.45 divided by the total length of the line 0 0.76 minus 0 0.022 and let's see it's asking for the mass again so we're going to multiply by 2 kilograms if it was asking for the weight percent you'd multiply by 100 percent but it gives us the mass in this case here so we know we've got 2 kilogram sample multiply that out and we're going to get 0 0.8 kilograms. Again, always include your units. Question G says, what's the composition of the ferrite in the perlite? Kind of a tricky way it's worded, but let's just think through that for a second. So we come down, the uh, upon cooling, the final gamma transforms the gamma is going to transform, as we know, it's at this special composition, the eutectoid composition, and it's going to form this sort of lamellar structure. I mean, I didn't draw the grain structure, but one grain is going to look um, like that. One of the, um, well, it's going to, we're going to form a eutectoid or lamellar uh, structure, which we call perlite for this system. And the question is actually just asking us, what's the composition of the ferrite in there? So let's just say that, you know, maybe that black phase there is the ferrite, for example, what's the composition of that? So it's just asking what's the composition of ferrite. Well, the composition of ferrite at this temperature, just below the eutectoid isotherm, is going to be 0 0.022. 
two-phase region, the composition of each phase is given by where the tie line intercepts that phase boundary. Remember, I always do this. Your two-phase region, you do your horizontal line, your tie line, and then you draw your vertical lines down to get the composition. Composition, weight percent of the component on the left, on the right, sorry. All right, so then the answer to question G, what's the composition of the ferrite, is just 0 0.022 weight percent carbon. Just pick it straight off the phase diagram. Question H. Kind of maybe we should have done this to start with. It asks us to draw the microstructure. So let's start off with what's gonna it's gonna look like as we come down above this phase boundary right here. So we're just 100% gamma. Well, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have some gamma phase grains. These are all gamma initially. Then we cross down through this phase boundary. We start to form some ferrite. So the ferrite is going to form largely along the grain boundaries. We can get some ferrite forming like this. Green boundaries are more reactive, so we've got the ferrite phase, the alpha phase coming out along the, the oscillant green boundaries. Maybe it becomes continuous. There's enough. Anyway, there's some ferrite there. And then we finally cross through the eutectoid isotherm, and all of this gamma can't remain as gamma, it's not thermodynamically stable, the gamma is going to transform to alpha plus cementite, or perlite, and what's it going to transform, what composition does it transform at? Well, the final, if you're drawing a tie line all the way as you, cr as you cool down through this two-phase region, the final tie line has, on the left, the ferrite phase at 0 0.022, and the gamma phase at 0.76. So the gamma is going to transform at the eutectoid composition and you know however you want to draw it, just some, some lamellar structure it's going to form perlite um, from within the prior gamma phase grains. It says also label the phases so let's just do that so we've got ferrite right there um, we've got then this here being perlite. Now actually this is a little, I didn't really need to label that as perlite if the question is stri strictly just asking for, for phases. The only phases are gamma plus cementite. So if the black one is, is, is um, ferrite, then this has to be Fe3C, the white phase. And those are the only two phases. If we want to be thorough about it, we could actually call this the pro-eutectoid ferrite that formed along the prior austenite grain boundaries. And then we can say the dark phase in this particular example, just because my, my marker is black. Um, is going to be the eutectoid ferrite. And the white stuff is just going to be called cementite. And that's it.